In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is in These days in Christianity um, and looking at the Christian faith in our country, the Orthodox faith, or just the rest of Christianity, it's easy to become cynical. It's easy to look out upon the vast expanse of, of once, what was once considered a Christian country and to get some negative feelings and to think. Uh, I've heard people uh, who believe that the, well, they were Protestant, but that the church has entire, entirely apostatized. Others see, look to Christians and they see that Christianity has largely become almost like a political party, that it's joined itself to politics. And that's on both sides of the aisle. Some look out and they don't see mercy, they don't see prayerfulness, but the main accusation I think would be, what's the difference between the world, us, us who are in the world, and the Christians? They seem a bit more judgmental, they seem to have more rules, but outside of that, where's the transformation? Where's the joy? Where's the salvation? And this could be a criticism leveled against many of us. Now, just to uh, add a caveat to that, people don't see me repenting very often. When I say that, you don't see what I say in confession. So whereas you may see me make mistakes publicly or sin or be forgetful or do things that and I'm not necessarily proud of. You often don't see me or anybody doing repentance publicly. So we have to also say that even within the Christian faith that yes, there are many people and we don't claim to be simply a holy nation that is above everyone else and better than everyone else and perfect in every way, but that we are filled with broken people who are working out our salvation with fear and trembling with the help of Christ and that sometimes when we sin or when we sin or when we feel fall into various things we're always called to repent and and that's what the world doesn't see it doesn't see us repenting because repentance is largely private it doesn't see that so anyways maybe we can forgive all these Christians and culture when we look at them and we judge them Beyond that, in our church, we have the lives of the saints. And today we celebrate the saints of, of, of North America. And one of the things that the saints have been traditionally, as part of the Orthodox faith, have been used for is empirical evidence. Because as people live in the church and live their lives as Christians, and often are disappointed by other Christians, there also has to be a counterbalance to that. And that is occasionally we need to see someone who actually lives the Christian life. Someone who lives it in a deeper and a more profound way and someone whom when we encounter them we experience Christ. And that we see the kingdom of heaven manifest within our time. And think about it, if we were talking about saints of the first century, many of whom were martyrs, it would be easy to say, oh, that's nice. And look back and talk about a time as a museum and how, the church, how great the church was in the early church. And we could even do this in the second century and the third century. But what's marvelous about having American saints is that we can say that in our century, in the time in which we've lived, there have been people dedicated enough in their following of Christ to obtain a level of sanctity where they brought Christ to others and where they were persons that we would actually emulate, that we would rely on their teachings to guide us as a correct guide forward on our path to Christ. And so we have a church founded by one of these saints, Saint Innocent, a great translator and a master of all trades and and endless labors and work 
We have, uh, he is a hierarch. We have mothers like Blessed Mother Olga, who will eventually be canonized because of uh, the various miracles in, in her life of charity, serving as a mother. We have lay people who were monastics, such as St. Herman of Alaska, who diligently opened orphanages, who fought on behalf of people who were being enslaved by Russian fur traders. We have Raphael Brooklyn who traveled all over the country, bringing and planting seeds of the church that flourished into parishes and grew the faith. St. Tikhon, so concerned at bringing the services in the English language to English-speaking people a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago. So that's not, of course, the exhaustive list. There's about 20 different personalities now. Uh, Eric and I were talking about this morning. There's an icon in the back, and I think I can see six there, seven. We have an icon up front with about 11. And then now we're actually up to 20, around 20. Uh, various priests, higher martyrs, people who went back to uh, Russia and were martyred. But the point of these lives, I've, uh, I'll mention St. John Maximovich because St. John Maximovich, uh, we can talk about St. Nicholas and we hear about dramatic miracles and all sorts of these things of these wonder-working saints in the days of old. But we have a saint who has been that way who's only in the last 70 years. So these things are not old wives' tales. There are people alive now who served and worked with these many of the personalities that have become canonized within our church who manifested Christ to their people. So we can be cynical, certainly, and we can look at ourselves humbly and realize that, yes, as Christians, we often fail. But let's not... Uh, spend a lot of time with those feelings. No, um, no group is defined by its worst members. We need to look to those who were exemplar, those who really tried to live it. As a matter of fact, this is a common statement, and I, I don't know who the quote is from, but he said, oh, goodness, it, this is a paraphrase too, it's even worse. But Christianity would be a great religion if, if, if it was ever tried. Anyways, he said it much differently, but he, his assumption was that it seems like no one's ever really tried to do it. But we know within our church that many have tried to do it and then many have actually become sanctified, joyful, transformed, healed, and then have gone to manifest Christ and bring healing, transformation to cultures, to people, People who we would look to not only for their morality and their ethical lives, but also for their compassion, their generosity, their service towards the broader society. So as we celebrate this feast day of North American saints, may God somehow reach down and inspire us to emulate our saints of our day, to read their lives, to familiarize ourselves with them, and then further to take whatever inspiration that they had and to apply it to ourselves so that somehow we can take the faith seriously. We will still be repenting. We will still not be perfect. But all we can do is day by day strive. And that is what we learn when we read the lives of the saints. That is essentially all that they did. They fell down, they got up, they fell down, they got up, and gradually God transformed them and gradually they became holy. May God bless us in our pursuit of holiness in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst.